Hi guys, I'm gonna keep reading. We're in Numbers 25, <clears throat> so let's pray. Dear Jesus, please, um, we love you so much and thank you so much for choosing to die on the cross for our sins. And Father, please help us retain and understand the knowledge that we read today. And thank you so much for your many blessings. And we pray and ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, Numbers 25. The Israelites worship Baal. While the Israelites were camped at Acacia, some of the men had sex with Moabite women. These women then invited the men to ceremonies where sacrifices were offered to their gods. The men ate the meat from the sacrifice, sacrifices and worshipped the Moabite gods. The Lord was angry with Israel because they had worshipped the god Baal Peor. So he said to Moses, take the Israelite leaders who are responsible for this and have them killed in front of my sacred tent where everyone can see. Maybe then I will stop being angry with the Israelites. Moses told Israel's officials, which um, these were the special leaders who were probably responsible for an entire tribe or, or part of a tribe. So Moses told Israel's officials, each of you must put to death any of your men who worship Baal. Later, Moses and the people were at the sacred tent crying when one of the Israelite men brought a Medianite woman to meet his family. Uh, Medianite used here as a general term for various peoples who lived east of the Jordan River. Some of these people were probably ruled by the Moabite king. Okay. Phinehas, the grandson of Aaron, the, Aaron the priest, saw the couple and left the crowd. He found a spear and followed the man into his tent where he ran the spear through the man and into the woman's stomach. The Lord immediately stopped punishing Israel with a deadly disease, but 24,000 Israelites had already died. The Lord said to Moses, In my anger, I would have wiped out the Israelites if Phinehas had not been faithful to me. But instead of punishing them, I forgave them. So because of the loyalty that Phinehas showed... I solemnly promise that he and his descendants will always be my priests. The Israelite man that was killed was Zimri, son of Salu, who was one of the leaders of the Simeon tribe. And the Medianite woman killed with him was Cosby, the daughter of a Medianite clan leader named Zer. The Lord told Moses, The Medianites are now enemies of Israel, so attack and defeat them. They tricked the people of Israel into worshiping their god at Peor, and they are responsible for the death of Cosby, the daughter of one of their own leaders. Numbers 26. The Israelites are counted a second time. After the Lord had stopped the deadly disease from killing the Israelites, he said to Moses and Eleazar, son of Aaron, and Eleazar, or Eleazar is Phinehas' father. So Aaron, Eleazar, Phinehas. Okay. I want you to find out how many Israelites are in each family. Then make a list of every man 20 years and older who is able to serve in Israel's army. Israel was now camped in the hills of Moab across the Jordan River from the town of Jericho. Moses and Eleazar told them what the Lord had said about counting the men 20 years and older, just as Moses and their ancestors had done when they left Egypt. There were 43,730 men from the tribe of Reuben, the oldest son of Jacob, a.k.a. Israel. These men were from the clans of Hanok, Palu, Hezron, and Carmi. Palu was the father of Eliab and the grandfather of Namuel, Dothan, and Abiram. These are the same Dothan and Abiram, who had been chosen by the people, but who followed Korah and rebelled against Moses, Aaron, and the Lord. That's when the Lord made the earth open up and swallowed Dothan, Abiram, and Korah. At the same time, fire destroyed 250 men as a warning to the other Israelites. But the Korahite clan wasn't destroyed. 
There were 22,200 men from the tribe of Simeon. They were from the clans of Nemuel, Jamin, Jochen, Zerah, and Shal. There were 40,500 men from the tribe of Gad. There were the clans of Zaphon, Haggai, Shuni, Ozni, Uri, Arad, and Areli. There were 76,500 men from the tribe of Judah. They were from the clans of Shalah, Perez, and Zerah, as well as Hezron and Hamul, whose ancestor was Perez. Judah's sons, Ur and Onan, had died in Canaan. There were 64,300 men from the tribe of Issachar. They were from the clans of Tola, Puva, Jashub, and Shimron. There were 65,000. 60,500 men from the tribe of Zebulun. They were from the clans Sarad, Elon, and Jalil. There were 52,700 men from the tribe of Manasseh, son of Joseph. They were from the clan of Machir, the clan of Gilead, his son, and the clans of his six grandsons, Ezer, Halek, Asriel, Shechem, Shemida, and Heifer. Zelophead, son of Heifer, had no sons, but he had five daughters, Mala, Noah, Hogla, Milka, and Terza. There were 32,500 men from the tribe of Ephraim, son of Joseph. They were from the clans of Shuthela, Becher, Tahan, and Aaron, the son of Shuthela. There were 45, 600 men from the tribe of Benjamin. They were from the clans of Bala, Ashbal, Ahiram, Shephufam, Hufam, as well as from Ard and Naaman, the two sons of Bela. There were 64, 400 men from the tribe of Dan. They were all from the clan of Shuham. There were 53, 400 men from the tribe of Asher, they were from the clans of Imna, Ishvi, and Bariah, and from the two clans of Heber and Malkiel, the sons of Bariah. Asher's daughter was Sarah. Or Sarah. There were 45,400 men from the tribe of Naphtali. They were from the clans of Jaziel, Guni, Jezer, and Shillam. The total number of Israelite men listed was 601730. The Lord said to Moses, divide the land of Canaan among these tribes according to the number of people in each one. So the larger tribes have more land than the smaller ones. I will show you. Uh, the Hebrew text has, instead of I will show you, uh, cast lots to find out. Pieces of wood or stone called lots were used to find out what the Lord wanted his people to do. Okay, I will show you what land to give each tribe, and they will receive as much land as they need according to the number of people in it. The tribe of Levi included the clans of the Gershonites, Kohathites, Merarites, as well as the clans of Libni, Hebron, Mali, Mushi, and Korah. Kohath, the Levite, was the father of Amram. The husband of Levi's daughter, Jochebed, who was born in Egypt. Amram and Jochebed's three children were Aaron, Moses, and Miriam. Aaron was the father of Nadab, Abihu, Eleazar, and Ithamar. Wait, did Aaron marry his own sister? Uh, I don't know. But Nadab and Abihu had died when they offered fire that was unacceptable to the Lord. In the tribe of Levi, there were 23,000 men and boys at least a month old. They were not listed with the other tribes because they would not receive any land in Canaan. Moses and Elzar counted the Israelites while they were camped in the hills of Moab across the Jordan River from Jericho. None of the people that Moses and Aaron had counted in the Sinai desert were still alive, except Caleb, son of Jephunneh, and Joshua, son of Nun. The Lord had said that everyone else would die there in the desert. Okay, Numbers 27. The daughters of 
Zalophahad are given land. Zalophahad, son of Hefer, son of Gilead, son of Macher, son of Manasseh, son of Joseph, was from the Manasseh tribe. And he had five daughters whose names were Mala, Noah, Hogla, Milcah, and Terzah. One day his daughters went to the sacred tent where they met with Moses, Elzar, and some other leaders of Israel, as well as large, a large, as well as a large crowd of Israelites. The young woman said, "You know that her father died in the desert, but it was for something he did wrong, not for joining with Korah and rebelling against the Lord. Our father left no sons to carry on his family name. But why should his name die out that?" die out for that reason. Give us some land like the rest of his relatives in our clan so our father's name can live on. Moses asked the Lord what should be done and the Lord answered. So Lofahad's daughters are right. They should be given part of the land of their father. Part of the land their father would have received. Tell the Israelites that when a man dies without a son, his daughter will inherit his land. If he has no daughter, his brothers will inherit the land. But if he has no brothers, his father's brothers will inherit the land. And if his father has no brothers, the land must be given to his nearest relative in the clan. This is my law, and the Israelites must obey it. Joshua is appointed Israel's leader. The Lord said to Moses, One day you will go up into the Abaram Mountains, and from there you will see the land I am giving the Israelites. After you have seen it, you will die. Just like your brother Aaron, because both of you disobeyed me at Meribah near the town of Kadesh in the Zin Desert. When the Israelites insulted me there, you didn't believe in my holy power. Moses replied, You are the Lord God and you know what is in everyone's heart. So I ask you to appoint a leader for Israel. Your people need some someone to lead them into battle, or else they will be like sheep wandering around without a shepherd. The Lord answered, Joshua, son of Nun, can do the job. Place your hands on him to show that he is the one to take your place. Then go with him and tell him to stand in front of Eleazar the priest and the Israelites. Appoint Joshua as their new leader and tell them they must now obey him just as they obey you. But Joshua must depend on Eleazar to find out from me. The Hebrew text has by the Urim, which is something used by the priest to get answers from the Lord. Okay, but Joshua must depend on Eleazar to find out from me what I want him to do as he leads Israel into battle. Moses followed the Lord's instructions and took Joshua to Eleazar and the people. And then, then he placed his hands on Joshua and appointed him Israel's leader. Regular daily sacrifices. The Lord told Moses to say to the people of Israel, Offer sacrifices to me at the appointed times of worship so that I will smell the smoke and be pleased. Each day, offer two rams a year old as sacrifices to please me. The animals must have nothing wrong with them. One will be sacrificed in the morning and the other in the evening. Along with each of them, one kilo of your finest flour mixed with a liter of olive oil must be offered as a grain sacrifice. This sacrifice to please me was first offered at Mount Sinai. Finally, along with each of these two sacrifices, a liter of wine must be poured on the altar as a drink offering. The second ram will be sacrificed that evening, along with the other offerings, just like the one sacrificed that morning. The smell of the smoke from these sacrifices will please me. The Lord said, on the Sabbath, in addition to regular daily sacrifices, you must sacrifice two rams a year old to please me. These rams must have nothing wrong with them and they will be sacrificed with a drink offering and two kilos of your finest flour mixed with olive oil. The Lord said, on the first day of each month, bring to the altar two bulls, one full grown ram and seven rams a year old that have nothing wrong with them. Then offer these as sacrifices to please me. 
Three kilos of your finest flour mixed with olive oil must be offered with each bowl as a grain sacrifice. Two kilos of flour mixed with oil must be offered with the ram and one kilo of flour mixed with oil must be offered with each of the young rams. The smell of the smoke from these sacrifices will please me. Offer two liters of wine as a drink offering with each bowl. One and a half liters with the ram and one liter with each of the young rams. Finally, you must offer a goat as a sacrifice for sin. These sacrifices are to be offered on the first day of each month in addition to the regular daily sacrifices. The Lord said, celebrate Passover in honor of me on the 14th day of the first month of each year. The following day will begin the festival of thin bread, which will last for one week. During this time, you must honor me by eating bread made without yeast. On the first day of this festival, you must rest from your work and come together for worship. Bring to the altar two bowls, one full-grown ram, and seven rams a year old that have nothing wrong with them. And then offer these sacrifices as sacrifice, and then offer these as sacrifices to please me. Three kilos of your finest flour mixed with olive oil must be offered with each bowl as a grain sacrifice. Two kilos of flour mixed with oil must be offered with the ram, and one kilo of flour mixed with the oil must be offered with each of the young rams. And also or also offer a goat as a sacrifice for the sins of the people. All of these are to be offered each day of the festival in addition to the regular sacrifices. And the smoke from them will please me. Then on the last day of the festival, you must once again rest from work and come together for worship. The Lord said, On the first day of the harvest festival, you must rest from your work. Come together for worship and bring a sacrifice of new grain. Offer two young bulls, one full-grown ram, and seven rams a year old as sacrifices to please me. Three kilos of your finest flour mixed with olive oil must be offered with each bull as a grain sacrifice. Two kilos of flour mixed with oil must be offered with the ram. And one kilo of flour mixed with oil must be offered with each of the young rams. Also offer a goat as a sacrifice for sin. The animals must have nothing wrong with them and are to be sacrificed along with the regular daily sacrifices. Um, okay. Damn, these, this next chapter is about stuff we've already read about, too. It's okay. We'll get through it. And we'll get into the goods. Okay, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for our fellowship together. Please bless everyone who um, wants to know you and wants to read the Bible and... Um, please soften our hearts so that we're kind and loving and compassionate to each other, just like you were, Jesus. And thank you for loving us unconditionally, and we pray and ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, I love you. God bless.